Welcome to Stop Fake, the place where we set the record straight on disinformation about Ukraine. I'm Marco Supran with Stop Fake's latest dissection of the Russian alternate reality. This week's stories include Russia claims Ukraine gets the short end of the stick from its trade deal with the European Union, Ukrainian shipbuilders massively fleeing to Russia, and CAVE demands the extradition of a European member of parliament who visited the Donbass region controlled by Russian proxies. So let's start digging and get to the truth. On May 9th, the Russian newspaper Gazeta.ru published a story claiming that Ukraine is losing out on trade with the European Union as agreed upon export quotas are filled quickly and manufacturers are unable to replace the lost Russian market with new customers. The publication claims that limited export quotas don't allow most businesses to make a profit, and the Ukrainian government has failed to convince the European Union to increase exports from Ukraine. Gazeta.ru not only manipulated figures, but also completely ignored the reality on the ground regarding Ukrainian exports to the European Union. Four days prior to the publication of this fake story, Ukraine's agrarian policy ministry announced that the European Union has expanded Ukraine's agricultural export quotas, a decision that is likely to yield some $200 million in revenue. Ukraine also continues negotiations to expand its exports to the European bloc even further. Now, Gazeta.ru uses selective data on Ukrainian exports. According to Ukraine's statistics office in 2017, the country's exports grew by nearly 33% compared to the same period in 2016. Exports to the EU amount to 39% of Ukraine's overall exports and have nearly doubled from last year. Gazeta.ru also alleges that other sectors of Ukraine's economy are suffering and claims that Ukraine's Antonov Aviation Company has not produced any new planes because of problems with replacing Russian component parts. But the truth shows a different picture. In December 2016, Ukraine rolled out its new Antonov plane, the AN-132 light multipurpose aircraft. The airplane had its maiden flight last April. Russia's defense ministry television channel Zvezda published a story claiming that Ukraine's shipbuilders are massively fleeing to Russia. Zvezda's claims are based on the pro-Russian site Polit Navigator, which ran the initial fake story citing a cave-based political analyst views on labor migration issues expressed during a RIA Novosti press conference held in Kiev. Analyst Andriy Zolotaryov did indeed say that the majority of Ukraine's migrants work in Russia. However, at no time did he mention Ukrainian shipbuilders or their alleged massive flight to Russia. Zvezda also claims that Ukraine's professional labor force is not in demand in Europe. Now, according to the International Organization for Migration's latest reports, Russia is the country where the largest number of Ukrainian migrants head. However, the findings of this report also show that, quote, increased labor migration is accompanied by a nascent reorientation of flows from Russia to the EU. The share of potential migrant workers from Ukraine seeking work in Russia decreased from 18% in 2011 to 12% in 2015. The majority of potential migrants planning short-term trips for the purpose of earning intend to go to Russia, whereas long-term migrants planning to stay abroad for over a year go to Poland. A recent poll conducted by the rating agency shows that 36% of Ukraine's migrants chose to work in Poland, while only 25% opted for Russia. When asked which European country they would most like to work in, 22% said Germany, while only 7% chose Russia. Zvezda's claim that there is no demand for Ukrainian workers in Europe doesn't hold water. It is labor shortages in Europe that allow Ukrainians to secure work there. Some 1 million Ukrainians are currently working legally in Poland, and recruiting agencies are busy looking for skilled Ukrainian workers to fill positions in specific EU countries. Spain's Publico newspaper featured a story last month claiming that Kiev was demanding the European Union extradite 50 European anti-fascists to Ukraine for suspicion of terrorism. Among those named by Publico was Eleonora Ferenza, 
a member of the European Parliament from Italy's Communist Refoundation Party. The 50 people mentioned in the Publico article are members of various communist movements who took part in what they call, quote, the anti-fascist caravan in the Donbass. The group traveled to the Donbass region on April 29th through May 5th, entering the Russian-occupied territory in eastern Ukraine by crossing the uncontrolled border from Russia in violation of Ukrainian law. Now, Ukraine's General Prosecutor's Office is responsible for extraditions. In a written response to Stop Fake's inquiry about the alleged extradition, the General Prosecutor said they had not received any requests for such an extradition from Ukrainian police, nor had they issued any extradition requests to EU authorities. Publico cites a Ukrainian Foreign Ministry note sent to Italy on April 28th, allegedly requiring Forenza's detention and extradition. The newspaper also claims that Kiev insisted Italian authorities arrest Forenza and the rest of the group before they arrive in Donbass. Ms. Forenza alleges the same on her Facebook post of May 5. Her timeline is filled with posts repeating this fake claim to several Italian media such as La Repubblica and others. This fake was also disseminated by the Russian-language communist publication Red Spring. According to Ukraine's ambassador to Italy, Yevhen Perelehin, Ukraine's foreign ministry did send a note to its Italian counterpart on the eve of the group's visit, explaining that visiting the occupied territories was in violation of Ukrainian law and asking Italy to take measures to stop the visit. There is no mention of arrests, extraditions, or accusations of terrorism. Forenza and her group traveled to Russian-occupied eastern Ukraine for a communist May Day meeting. The visit was a private initiative and does not reflect Italy's official position, said Italy's foreign ministry. That's it for this week. Be vigilant. Beware of fakes. If you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, send it to us for a truth autopsy. Remember, to stay healthy, don't consume fake news. Your brain will thank you, and the psychological climate of society will not suffer a precipitous decline. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Top Fake. Thanks for watching.